Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Wednesday's Word. I'm Pastor Matt Sergeant, the pastor for Andrew Chapel United Methodist Church, and it's good to see you online once again. I certainly hope you enjoyed our Holy Week services online and our Easter Sunday celebration service online. And these are just wonderful ways, are they not, uh, to connect with one another when we cannot be in person. And I really enjoy also offering Wednesday's word to you so we can continue to connect with one another. You know, I've been thinking um, after that great Easter celebration, um, I just want more Jesus. How about you? So today's uh, word is titled what I like to title, Give Me Jesus. I was looking in the Gospel of John for today, chapter 12, beginning with the 20th verse. But before I read it, um, I used a Bible I haven't used in a little while, and I wanted to show it to you. It's called the Meeting God Bible. And this is a fantastic Bible uh, done in the New Revised Standard Version translation. Uh, but what it has is it in it, uh, in the sidebars here, it has spiritual disciplines. Um, spiritual disciplines are wonderful ways for us to connect deeper with God. Spiritual disciplines such as prayer, such as worship, fasting, things like that where we can connect with God. I want to read a part of, uh, after I read the text, a part of a devotion uh, that I thought was really good, uh, especially in light of our circumstances as we deal with the coronavirus pandemic. But here are these words from chapter 12, beginning with the 20th verse. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and they said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Oh yes, <laughs> I want to see more of Jesus, don't you? Listen to this devotion, though. It says that Jesus may be seen. That's the title of it, and here's what it says. The Greeks come from a society uh, with a vast tradition of learning, philosophy, and culture. Now those were the people, the Greeks, who came to see Jesus. Yet they came to see Jesus because they have needs. All the learning that they had, um, the wealth that they had and everything, but yet they were coming to see Jesus because they had needs. Boy, uh, I, I really resonate with this because don't we have some needs today? Maybe you're sitting there watching this right now and thinking, I have so many needs. Then focus, friend, on Jesus. Because at the core of everything, Jesus is who we should focus on and his love for us. But it goes on to say this. I wanted to say to share this also with you. In our own day, we have an explosion of information available to us, but we are also more aware than ever of our human needs. Wow, that's so true. I want to stop there, too, because we are under an explosion of information with this pandemic that we're dealing with. It's on the news. You can't get away from it. We're being affected by it because many of us have had the uh, quarantine. Uh, many of us are working from home. And when we're working from home, uh, there's more and more emails that we have to deal with, text, phone calls, all that kind of thing, which are good, of course. But we're being exploded with all this information, and it, it can really kind of bring some negativity into our lives. So, so peeling all that away, for the Christian, what we need to do is just sit quietly and focus on Jesus. That's what we need to do. And, and then it goes on to say this, great, it has a great question. It says, what human needs seem most urgent in our own day? I'll say that again. What human needs seem most urgent in our own day? There are a lot of urgent needs out there, aren't there, friends? With, with the pandemic, um, there are people who are getting sick or who have succumbed to this illness, and there's pain and suffering, uh, and, and there, we're praying for a cure to the coronavirus. So there are so many needs out there, friends. But personally, what kind of needs do you have today? Can you take a time, a little bit of time, and think about those? You know, the other day um, I saw this young person wearing that T-shirt that said "Got Jesus," and you may remember what that comes from. It was some years ago where um, the milk campaign came out that said "Got Milk." I wonder if this person put it on 
maybe they hadn't worn it in a while, but they put it on and, and wore this Got Jesus t-shirt so that they could remind people that that's what we really need. That's our true human need. I tell you, if I had that shirt today, I'd be wearing it right now for you because that's our true need. We need Jesus. In times that, such as these, we need Jesus. He will show us the way. He will get us through the next minutes, the next hours, the next day. I remember uh, reading a story about a young pastor who just got out of seminary and he got his first appointment and it was in a small farming country of a church of about maybe no more than 25. And what he did was he took all this learning he had from seminary, all those theological words and, and uh, all those studies and, he, and all those papers that he wrote and he put those into his sermons. And so week after week he was preaching these things, um, all these lofty words, all these theological terms. Till one Sunday, uh, one of the elders before the pastor came put up on the um, pulpit simply this in a big note, just said, John 12, 21. That's all it said, John 12, 21. And so when the pastor came in to start preparing for his ser sermon before everybody arrived, he saw that sitting on the, the pulpit, John 12, 21. And so he looked it up and of course the words simply read, we wish to see Jesus. Isn't that the truth, friends? With all that's going on, when you watch the news and see all the negativity and, and, and all the fear that's been arising up in our lives because of this pandemic, what we really want to see is Jesus. Jesus, who is our constant hope. Jesus, who is our source that will get us through these difficult times. Jesus, who shows us love, love for each one of us. You know, um, there's, a, there's a beautiful contemporary hymn. It's called Give Me Jesus. And it goes something like this. You look it up online sometime and, and listen to it. It's beautiful. But it says, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. You can have all of this world, the song says. But give me Jesus. It also says, in, in, uh, and when I am alone, and when I am alone, and when I am alone, give me Jesus. You can have all of this world. Just give me Jesus. That's my prayer for you today, friend, that you pray that prayer. Just give me Jesus. If you just take time to reflect on him, he will enter into your life. And he can be the source of love and power that you need during this time. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, certainly we need you. Oh, how we need you. So we say those words, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Indeed, oh God, in uncertain times, we certainly pray for all those who are in trouble right now due to the coronavirus. Those who have uh, become ill, those who are in harm's way from the disease, Lord. We pray for our first responders, our doctors, our nurses, all those who are essential personnel that are trying to keep things running during this time, Lord. But we certainly pray for those who have become ill from it or those who have succumbed to this disease. And we pray, Lord, for all the families who are grieving over the loss of loved ones because of this virus. And certainly, Lord, for those who are sick with it, we pray for healing. Lord, most of all, as we continue to uh, think and reflect on you, we just wish to see you more and more every day. So we pray these things through the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you online this Sunday at 10 a.m. Take care, and God bless.